<laughs> Thanks for coming. Uh, we had a group this morning, and you're going to learn more than you ever cared to. Uh, but what I told the group this morning when we get started on this is this isn't just about football. No. Football is important, yes, but it's about the students, the players, the alumni, all of the things. And to put it in a historical perspective, which this is chronological, and you trace it. This is what I call important. Keep this in mind. 27 years after Nebraska became a state, they came with their first football game. This would be the 111th season. So foot, Nebraska football is as much of the history of this state as most of any other part. And, that, and when you think of those terms, 111 years of the football. They only been a state 137, 138. So, football has been part of the history of the state, three fourths of the history. So, that's important to remember. Came to state in 1863, 27 years later, the University of Nebraska has a football team playing teams in other states. So, that puts it a little more perspective. And that's what this is about. It's about the history of the players, the coaches, the university, all of that. And that's why it's kind of fun. Yes, football, we all enjoy football. And we're lucky because this is the first time this place has shown this much of it. Uh, and we were very thankful for the guy who did it, Bob Iver, who did the collection. He's been talking about it with the history. And he probably knows more about this part of the state's history than anybody I've ever met. And I want to introduce Bob. Susan's out of his life. You know, she's the one who gets the medal. <laughs> <laughs> and Bob has been a delightful one with it. And just absolutely wonderful in providing this. And it's something that very few people will ever forget. So I'm going to turn it over to Bob. Thank you again. Uh, I was just handing out the basic show on how we do some of the forms because we really wouldn't. So we're starting to collaborate on future things. <laughs> and this is the first of many things that we're going to work with him on. We may not show the collection, but we're going to work with him on his collection in the future. The museum will become a friend of his collection, we'll become open, and we'll become a display. Anytime he ever needs our help, we will be there because of what he did for us. So we're going to spend a couple of years playing catch up. Thank you to Bob. And he's been a wonderful man to work with. And you're going to thoroughly enjoy tonight. If you like the graphic football. If you're the local home on you'll fail the test. <laughs> Bob, thank you. Well, as a guest, the first thing I want to say is welcome to the Durham Western Heritage Museum, even though I myself is a guest. And in particular, welcome to the exhibit of the Cornish Collection. And we are very grateful for the museum for uh, showing it, and, and we hope that it really benefits the museum uh, and the rest. What I'd like to do is basically just uh, talk to you as I would talk to anyone who's going to give a tour, and I understand some of you are going to be giving tours. Yeah, my tripod. And so glean what information you can. Yeah, uh, feel free to ask any questions and, and so forth. You are not going to remember everything I say. Don't try to just try and, and, and listen to the history and then kind of formulate your own thoughts as you go through. But I'd like to give a little bit of background about myself and how it again. got started because a lot of people seem to be interested in that. Um, I was uh, born in Cook, Nebraska, and my father was a school teacher and a football and basketball coach. And my father was born with a congenital heart disease. And he was never able to play sport, but he was such a, an avid a fan of it, and he was a, an excellent coach. And so a lot of the passion that I have for sports came from my father. And he taught in Nebraska, he coached in Nebraska. And then when I was kind of young, he took up a position with Look Magazine, uh, where he would work with high schools in fundraising things, where students would go out and sell magazines, and uh, the money would then be uh, used to help with with whatever school budget they needed to have. And that look magazine took them up into Minnesota. And that was the age when I was just kind of a young tot. And um, I remember living in Minnesota, I became an avid Minnesota Twins fan. And that's when I first started collecting. I started collecting baseball cards. And as we moved on a couple different occasions, my mom threw away my collection, which was really upset me tremendously. I had the Mickey Mantle rookie card. Uh, and I was also a New York Yankee fan. Uh, but then my father was transferred to uh, Wisconsin, and at that point, 
Vince Lombardi and Green Bay Packers when I became an avid football fan. But then at the end of my seventh grade year, my father passed away because of his heart condition, and my mother moved us back to Cook because she wanted to be close to friends and relatives. And that was in 1964. And I remember coming back to Nebraska in 1964, and as I entered the eighth grade year, football uh, season started, I was amazed at how the state was so excited about football and with what Bob DeVanity was doing with the program. And it was at that point that, that my interest in Nebraska football was really sparked. And uh, so I kind of, rather than collecting baseball cards this time, I started collecting football cards again. And it was one of those things that uh, I saw a button here and I bought it, and I saw a pen up there and I bought it. And I only had a paper out, so it's not that I had a lot of money. But what little money I did have, I, I would buy little pieces of memorabilia. And I'm just going to say one thing that the collecting of memorabilia back then was not even on the radar screen. I mean, there were a few of us nuts around it doing that crazy thing. And people, when they did sell their stuff, it's not a matter of selling it. Sometimes they gave it away, and many times they threw it away. You know, people just didn't think memorabilia was worth anything. I remember back at that time going to garage sales and buying programs for 10 cents, 25 cents, programs in the 30s and 40s. And some of these same programs now, it's not a matter of them being worth 10 or 25 cents. In some cases, they're worth hundreds of dollars. Just recently, this program of One Life that sold on eBay for about $1,300. And so it was a situation where um, people just weren't into collecting this sort of thing, and, and it was very easy to collect in those early years. Um, as I entered high school, I met a girl by the name of Robin Penny, which was the younger sister of Jeff Penny. Jeff was one year ahead of me, and my older sister became very good friends with Jeff. And Jeff was the quarterback on our McCook Bison high school team, and he was a sensational athlete. And when he got the scholarship to come to Nebraska, it was a really big deal back in McCook. And uh, even though Jeff and I were not best of friends or buddy buddy, I mean, everybody knew him, and, and we were all excited for him. And uh, as high school boys do, uh, on the weekend, we decided, well, Jeff's playing, let's, let's go down the team play. And back then, at halftime, they would open up the gate and get in free. And what we would do is, is being high school boys with very little money, uh, we would wait till halftime and then we would go in and, of course, watch the second half of the game. And after the game, of course, all my friends wanted to go and leave and, and go party and find some girls or something like that. But I was one of these guys that I just couldn't, I couldn't leave the stadium. I mean, I'd see a ticket and I'd go over and pick up a ticket. And then I'd see a program and I'd pick up a program. And it was just one of those things that was a quirk in my personality. And, uh, you know, they all thought I was nuts. My father was nuts. But uh, it, it, it just kind of developed that way. Uh, I went to school on a music scholarship at Cook Junior College, and that's where I met my wife. She was also attending uh, school on a music scholarship. And early on, I just collected steadily and, and, and consistently and, um, and made it to the collection of films into what it is today. Um, to me, when I was young, I had no vision of anything. I was just a young kid who liked to collect. The vision of really doing something with the collection didn't come about until the early evening. My wife and I uh, owned a small chain of card and gift stores, and we were down in Dallas, Texas, uh, on, a, on a buying trip at the World Trade Market. And it was during one of those early visits in the early 80s that we walked into our first Hard Rock Cafe. How many people have been in a Hard Rock Cafe? And, and when I walked in, I was just totally flabbergasted. To me, it was just a sensational concept. I mean, I remember seeing a Jimi Hendrix guitar and, and, and an item from the crew. And they had uh, Buddy Holly's glasses. And they had things from the Beatles. And of course, I'm a big uh, fan of music as well. And to me, I just thought it was sensational. I remember looking over at Susan and saying, you know, this is what we need to do with our collection. We need to take it. We need to put it in a restaurant concept. We need to have it so the fans can see it and enjoy it and, and do it really good. A rock and roll theme restaurant is not going to go over big and big. But a Nebraska Cornhusker restaurant, I think, would be big. And so it's been since the early 80s that we really had a vision. And what we hope to do someday is, is to put the restaurant in permanent display in a restaurant in Lincoln. We only desire to open up one restaurant and that will be a permanent home for the collection. Uh, we feel like we want to share the history with, with uh, the fans in Nebraska. 
we'll make money when they come in and order a salad or a sandwich or a steak. And we'll make money if they, they buy a uh, you know, Coca-Cola. But we want, we want the collection to be close to people. You know, to me, it, it's always been about history. The collection is not about money to me. Um, sometimes we spend more money in framing a piece and put more money in the framing than what the piece is worth. But to me, once again, it's about history. It's about preserving history. Uh, by the way, my wife took some framing classes, and everything you see in the display has been personally framed by my wife's oh. teacher. And that's about the only way we could have done it, simply because of the expensive framing. So my wife has done all the framing. Uh, I set the pieces that I want in the item, and then from there I turn my back and she does everything. Oh. If I get too close to a framing table, I get hit. <laughs> so uh, uh, if, 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 if you think it's artistic, uh, then all the credit goes to my wife. And one of the things we wanted to do, we, we didn't want to die. We, we wanted, we wanted my perspective of the, the pieces, and then we wanted, we wanted her perspective of color, design, and things like that. And so, uh, I've been to many shows over the years, and I've seen a lot of guys' collections, and I, and I think the the uh, feminine touch on it is something that uh, that I personally like, and I, I, I I'm happy the way that, that she does it. Um, but the ultimate plans for the museum, I mean, for, for the collection, is the collection will be placed in trust. We have children, and they may end up working in the restaurant, they may not. Uh, to me, I want my children to do what's going to make them happy. But ultimately, it will be placed in trust. And uh, we all only live a certain time uh, of life. And, and to me, uh, if, if I can leave one legacy, the legacy I'd like to leave is, is, is a collection that helps define and, and people to understand the history of the rest of the football program. And to me, uh, I don't ever want the collection sold. Now I have some duplicate pieces, some triplicate pieces that I trade, that I sell, but the main collection itself, and if I only have one piece of something, I never sell it. So to me, uh, the collection is going to be placed in trust, there'll be a board of trustees, and it will never be sold. Before it is sold, it will be in the will that will donate it back to the University of Nebraska because it will, it will never be broken. That's my um, I I'm perfectly fine with it being in a restaurant or a private business, but to me it's something that, that no one will ever own uh, past me. Uh, even if I wanted to go back today and try and assemble this collection, I can never do it today. The, the way sports memorabilia has become expensive, and pricey and hard to find. Um, as much uh, as I like to collect, I, I can never do it today. And maybe some people could, but, but it's, it's very hard. And most of the great collections that you do see today is just a matter of someone trying to buy a head start. And, and I was, it, was, it wasn't my plan, it was just kind of a lot. What I have tried to do with my collecting is collect from an historical perspective. There's different ways that people understand the history about something. People can write about it, and I love books, I read a lot of books, uh, and I think people that write books on the history of Nebraska football do a wonderful job. Sometimes people make videos. Uh, the collection was used by the University of Nebraska on two different occasions for, for historical documentaries, and I think they're wonderful. Uh, a third way, and, and the, the thing that I like, is a third way to help people understand the history is through the memorabilia. And to me, the memorabilia is a little bit more personal because you actually can see something from that era. You can see a program, you can see a uniform, you can see a football. To me, this tells a lot more of a story about the way football was played back in the 1900s than a picture of it in a book. So to me, I, I like the concept of memorabilia as a way for people to understand the history of not only football, uh, but of the Nebraska tournament.